You're listening to a podcast from digitaloilgas.com. This podcast is entitled, Just How Real is Blockchain for Oil and Gas? The slow pace that oil and gas is exploring the intriguing potential of blockchain makes one wonder just how real the promise is. Well, it's very real, as evidenced by a recent field trial in Europe. I owe much of this content to my friend and colleague Randy Wilson, who has been orchestrating the fieldwork in Europe. Let me begin by setting the context. Uh, first, watch some YouTube videos to get your head around the whole idea of blockchain. And be sure to read some of my previous articles to get a primer on how blockchain could impact the oil and gas industry. There's been plenty of breathless announcements of blockchain trials around the industry. Most of the trials, however, are pretty narrow in their scope, perhaps involving a couple of traders, a large and expensive cargo of oil or liquefied natural gas, and a cargo inspector. Sure, there are a lot of traded crude cargoes, but there's also considerable trading activity around refined petroleum products. The number of cargoes is greater, the volume on any specific cargo is smaller, and there are many more products involved, including diesel, gasoline, jet fuel, bunker, gas oil, and so on. So there is more overall trading activity in, the, in this sector of the oil and gas industry. If the approach to crude trading, with its fewer large cargoes, was also applied to finished products with its many more smaller cargoes, then the productivity improvements from blockchain would be amplified, since the fixed cost of transacting are spread over a smaller cargo volume. The field trial set out to test this logic and see if it held. The trial decided to take aim at the Amsterdam, Rotterdam, Antwerp, or ARA fuel marketplace in Europe. The specific commodity was diesel fuel, and the use case was the purchase, sale, and delivery of a cargo of diesel between two parties. Why the ARA market? Because it's at the center of the European oil sector, and Europeans are much more active in exploring blockchain potential. First, a little bit about the use case. Let's assume that you work for a large oil company, and you have a refinery somewhere in the ARA area. Your refinery pumps out diesel, and some of it is surplus to your specific customer base. Therefore, you wish to sell diesel to someone in the opposite situation, i.e. they need diesel fuel to meet their customer demand. In the current world, your traders get on the phone and call around to their contacts at the other trading desks. Eventually, they find a buyer, and the two parties go back and forth to land on the deal. Basically, the loading port, the volume to be exchanged, the date of loading, the date of delivery, the per unit price, and the pricing basis, either CIF or FOB, the product and its relevant specifications, such as sulfur content, and finally, the port of discharge. The buyer enters the deal details in her system, and your guy does the same in his system. The buyer and the seller then run a confirmation process to make sure the systems are lined up. Paper contracts are prepared, and in many cases, still mailed between parties or perhaps converted to PDF and emailed. Next, the parties need to charter a barge who will pick up the cargo. There's no transparent market for barges, so the buyer, if the deal is FOB or free on board, or the seller, if the deal is CIF or cost, insurance, and freight, has to call around for barge services and terms. There can be quite the runaround to find a suitable barge. Call six places, decide that the first barge was actually the right price, only to call back and find out that it's no longer available. The barge charter is put into place, captured on the barge guy's system, shared with the buyer and seller, and backed with more paperwork. The barge charter has much of the same data as the purchase and sale agreement, including the loading port, the delivery port, the volume to be loaded, the date of loading, the date of delivery, the per unit shipping price, the product, any penalties to be levied, and so on. Next, the parties need an inspector, who will be on deck to check out the product being loaded and that it meets the buyer's specifications. A contract is put in place with the inspector who enters the details into his system. Other parties to the transaction might include tank farm operators, port authorities who might charge for moorage, lock operators, canal authorities, and so on, all of whom have their own contracts and systems to feed. More paperwork is prepared and exchanged. Eventually, D-Day arrives, the barge shows up for the cargo, and the paperwork hopefully all lines up to allow the barge to load the cargo, take title, transport the cargo, be inspected, and offload the cargo at the correct site. Months later, the paperwork catches up, assuming there's no dispute, and payment for the cargo is settled. And heaven forbid that the cargo be sold while en route to the buyer. More paperwork. Blockchain to the rescue. 
Blockchain technology turns this process on its head. When the traders agree the terms of the deal, the key data gets written to a blockchain, where it is recorded as a single data block, accessible and shared by the two parties, and cannot be later disputed. Any errors in the buyer and seller systems are there for their own fault. The single truth is on the blockchain. All of the other specific events, that is the contracting of the inspector, the barge charter, the canal passage, are likewise written to the blockchain as single agreed records of truth and connected to previous blockchain entries involving the same cargo. Much of the paperwork, which encodes the key data, like port of loading, port of discharge, and so forth, into legal contracts, can be displaced with standing contract terms and the blockchain data. And as the blockchain logs the various transactions, smart contracts trigger the next steps in the process, including launching inquiries for services like barge and inspector services, issuing key documentation, and releasing the funds. No more waiting for staff to get around to it. In the end, the oil companies even agreed that the invoice was a fully superfluous document that no longer served any meaningful purpose. Smart contracts on blockchain could handle payment automatically. So what were the results? Well, this trial involved just one commodity and one trading market. But the two oil companies involved estimated that a blockchain solution for finished product trading would eliminate up to 50% of their back office costs, which handle all the paperwork, reconcile the accounts, and handle disputes. This is not a trivial sum of money in companies that oft times claim two back office team members for each front office trader. Disputes related to contracts would be almost eliminated. Business processes would become more nimble and responsive to change. Processes could be largely automated. Cash flows would be accelerated, since the smart contracts could be triggered as soon as key events occurred, and not several days or weeks later when the paper were caught up. There are a few lessons from this field trial. The companies involved have gained some critical insight into how blockchain behaves, where it works, and the hassles of adoption. Blockchain is like having a great Facebook page, but no friends. This small trial involved eight companies, buyer, seller, barge outfits, tank hubs, and inspectors, but a full solution would include hundreds of players. A lot of energy is going to have to be invested in pulling parties together to get agreement to work together in a new common way. That common way has to offer benefits for everyone, or the solution will be hard to get off the ground. In oil and gas, anti-combines laws and the scale and size mismatch between the players in a blockchain are going to be barriers. Many consortiums will fail. Next, security and privacy are table stakes. Your first friends in your blockchain consortium are going to be lawyers. Expect a lot of pre-work in the form of agreements on privacy and security before any tangible results emerge in real value areas. Third, small trials are one thing, but industrial scale is another. Blockchain technology in the field trial worked very well, but there were just a few companies involved. Technical performance as more companies get involved could become a problem. As process understanding advances, selecting the right underlying technology that enables the process properly becomes really important. Next, exchanging data between different blockchains is a work in process. Industry looks like it will be in a multi-blockchain setting in the future, and assuring that a smart contract on one blockchain triggers action on another is still a study area. Interoperability between blockchains will have to be solved. And finally, the technology is actually the easy part. Blockchain is, at its core, a change management problem. For example, the team built the technical blockchain solution in just a few weeks. But in the end, the back office teams could not quite bring themselves to abandon the invoice process. Invoices, after all, trigger payment. I suspect CFOs and CEOs are going to have to weigh in and direct their businesses to get on board. So what's the conclusion? Well, there's no ignoring it. Blockchain is real. The big oil and gas players are going to eventually deploy because the benefits are very significant. And the adventurous are learning rapidly with small trials on how to adopt this new digital technology. You have been listening to a podcast from digitaloilgas.com. If you like what you've heard, please subscribe to future installments and visit us at digitaloilgas.com.